What's shaking, everybody? My name is Mike at Filmboy24, and today we're going to try to get an image out of this really old roll of Kodachrome K40 that was exposed, I don't know when. Yep, that's my camera. Yeah, it's not another new camera. I'm doing this a little bit different than what I usually do. You see, most of my videos, I'll show a camera or I'll show a new roll of film or something like that. And the film is typically already shot and processed by me when I shoot this sort of this intro. Well, I'm doing this one different in that this roll, very old roll of Kodak K40, Kodachrome. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. I'll zoom in. It's an exposed roll and it's a found roll. So in other words, I didn't shoot this film. It was either something that came in a bulk lot of film that I purchased online or at a yard sale or a garage sale or an estate sale or it was in a camera that I purchased. Uh, frankly, I don't remember. I had a piece of tape on it because I usually will label these. All I know is that it originated and was probably shot somewhere in Michigan. Don't know when, it is a process K14, which was Kodak's uh, latest Kodachrome process. So I'm gonna venture to say this is late 70s, 80s, 90s, or early 2000s. Now I narrowed it down. So this video truly is a step-by-step. -step. I have no idea, I'm gonna release this video regardless, so obviously you're watching it now, doesn't mean that I've gotten an image off this. You'll have to wait and find out, or if you're one of those, you know, just keep tapping, let's find the video, and let's find the film, go ahead, uh, whatever. But I am going to go and do some test strips really quick, or a test strip, and I typically only test three different times. I go three, five, seven minutes at about 68 degrees in my go-to HC-110B. I've got it cooling off in my refrigerator as I speak. So when I cut this camera, I am actually going and developing some test strips. I will let you know if I get an image. I'll be right back. Whoa! And we're back. Test strip and all. So I did my uh, typical test strip. This is about 10 inches of the end of the roll. And you want to sort of ignore probably the first three or four inches because that was uh, exposed or at least more prone to become exposed over the years. So about four inches in, I did a test strip of about six inches. I used a little drink container. Now my little drink container here, I just filled this up with my HC-110 all the way to the mouth here. And then I would put just a little bit of the film in, you know, the first inch, inch and a half, put it in, and I would take a little uh, clothespin, snippy snippy, whatever you call them, C42, and um, just clip it to the side. See it in there? Look. And let it get all gajuged up in there. And then, uh, yeah, I, my, my process is first test strip, two minutes. After two minutes, you dunk another section, two more minutes. After that, four total minutes, dunk one more time for three minutes. That's a total of two plus two plus three. <laughs> I need two hands. Seven. Total of seven minutes. So that means the bottom of the test strip is my seven minute mark. The middle is my five minute and the top is my three minute. Now, I, I don't have a light board, so it's hard for me. I have to put it in my scanner and I'm not really going to do that right now. So I have to just kind of look at the light. I'll try to show you a picture but it wasn't real easy to get a good picture. But there are clearly three separate developing looks. <sighs> the middle, the five minute mark, and the three minute mark are, to me, the best. However, the five minute may be a skosh too dark. The three minute might be just a tad skosh too light. So I am going to settle, and by the way, I did it at 67 degrees. Sometimes with this really old film, I'll go even a little colder and a little shorter developing times. 
So with that, I do see images. I actually see images on all three developers. The seven minute, absolutely way too dark. So that's grossly overdeveloped. So there's definitely images. I'm going to go with 67 degrees for four minutes, wash or, or stop, and then I'm gonna fix like I did with this for five minutes in just my standard Kodak powder fixer. So with that, I am off to my darkroom bathroom to load this tank. I'm not gonna come back after loading the tank. This truly, by the way, this truly is a step-by-step -step process that I'm showing you because I still have no idea what's on that film. And again, this is totally backwards, back, back, <laughs> backwards from what I usually do. I usually know what I'm gonna talk about, especially on the developed film while I'm shooting these videos. I have no clue. So let me go load the tank, then I'm gonna quick process it. I'm gonna let it dry. I'll show you a couple of clips of the process and then we will come back with a final result. And you'll be able to see the film in all of its glory so long as it's not inappropriate. You know what I mean, because I don't know yet. Most of the time it's dogs and cats and houses and yard parties and birthday parties and kids and the typical stuff that, uh, you know, that most parents will film. Occasionally, although I've not really run across too much of it, it might be a tad inappropriate. But again, that's very few and far between. I'll be back in a minute. Film's drying, it's gone, it's out, it's out of here. It was a pain. This is, occasionally you get a cartridge that doesn't want to cooperate. I could not bre uh, break or bend the little pin back here. It didn't want to work for me. Pulling the film, it kept getting stuck. I had to use my pliers and try it. And finally, eventually I was able to snap the little pin inside here and it still didn't pull out very easily. So I did my old classic and I wound it onto a small 50 foot reel and then back wound it back onto another 50 foot reel and into my Lomo tank. <sighs> I'll tell you this, there are images, they're very faint images. The film is currently drying. Um, I processed it as a negative, as I always do. So you're gonna see the result of that here in just a second. It's gonna take some time to dry, probably an hour or two but for you, it will be instantaneous. I'm gonna eat some lunch, and I'll be back in another millimicrosecond. Next time you see me, I will have the finished film. <sighs> well, everything's done. Film dried, I scanned it, I put it in my editing software. <sighs> and it came out terrible. You see kids, Processing old Kodachrome, it's kind of like playing baseball. If you're good 25% of the time, or you can hit the ball 25% of the time, yeah, you'll probably make it to the pros. Same goes with Kodachrome. If you can get a decent image 25% of the time, and I've processed a ton of this with a ton of variants and a ton of different processors. Yeah, if you can get a decent image 25% of the time, you belong in the majors. Well, this is not one of those cases. This is the other 75% where the image came out absolutely terrible. The images are somewhat discernible, and I'm going to show it to you in just a second, and the uh, content is about what I expected it to be. I'm guessing it's probably from the early 80s sometime, 
and that puts it somewhere around 40 years probably just sitting in someone's garage or basement or in their camera in the closet or something like that. Color film, well this is actually black and white film but color was added later. Uh, but film, it's not, it's not really designed to be shot and then sat around for hundreds of years. You really need to shoot it and process it, especially with the newer stocks. That's the key to getting a good result is to shoot it, process it within a couple of days, and uh, that's, that's your best chance of getting good results. With that, let's look at this terrible, terrible representation of old Kodachrome black and white negative film right now. <laughs> Don't say I didn't warn you. I told you it was bad. At any rate, if you enjoy videos like this, if you want to see me develop, because I have a lot of these. I've bought a lot of cameras over the years, and a lot of them have had film in them. So coincidentally, I have a lot of uh, exposed film from someone else from years past. If you enjoy videos like this, let me know, and we'll make some more, and we'll do it step by step. And and you and I, we, it, and I'll know the same time you know, kind of what's on it. Um, I'm not sugarcoating it. It came out awful. Maybe next time we'll have better luck. Please do me a huge solid and without breaking your screen, headbutt that like button or just punch it if you'd like. If that makes you feel better. Just don't break your screen. I'm not responsible for it. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. Please. And until the very next time, we get together and do something fun, unexpected, and exciting, and probably analog. I'll see you. Mm. On the very next go around.